everyone, and welcome back to Children of Verite. We're so excited to have you this, this lovely Tuesday evening. Um, and as usual, we're going to hop right over to Adam for our wonderful sponsors. Thank you, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, for continued support here in the campaign. You can get an Electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. We also have Die Hard Dice, who has gifted our cast with, uh, and it looks like this one is in honor of Nicholas. Um, Nicholas. Some, uh, Nicholas. some rowdy rodent rocks. Rowdy rodent <laughs> rocks. Um, I love it. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Die Hard Dice, Nicholas's for that. Nicholas's rowdy rodent rocks. That's, That's also it. the name of the band that was playing at the party that we went <laughs> yes. to. Yes. And a statement of how awesome they are. I mean, yes. <laughs> Yes, all of it. You can get 10% off your order with the code Erte in the Die Hard store. And we will also be giving away a $20 promotional gift code. Uh, pay attention to the instructions and prompts and chat for that. And finally, tonight, you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. I'm Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane. And tonight, I'm playing Silas Sorrell, your dimensionally displaced magical superfan. You always look up into the right. <laughs> I, that's, that's where it is in my mind palace. It's that's somewhere it. over there. <laughs> all right, everybody. I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. See all the costuming and RPG stuff that I'm up to currently start of the year. Tonight I'm playing Feruza Armstrong and I'm sort of thinking about the rat party now. I'm like, didn't someone give birth at that party? Yeah. It's Nicholas party. and Christine. <laughs> so if I recall, um, yeah, so tonight I'm playing my favorite tist for his arms. It was, a, it was a baby shower. <laughs> celebrating rats. The, the, the most rat graphic rat. of baby showers. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's a perfect timing on a baby shower, right? When the babies arrive. Yeah. The babies yeah. Are in the course of yeah. the um, <laughs> There's not much gestation for rats. You got to really, you know, take a party takes planning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> They just have them on a weekly basis. Yeah. <laughs> every, every Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, it's every Tuesday night rap party. Rap party. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, uh, hi, I'm Jen Kretschmer. I, I apologize for giving everyone those mental images. Um, you can find me on the interwebs as at Dreamwisp. You can find me streaming as Dreamwisp Jen. Uh, Yes, tonight I will be playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn. I mean, you don't have to apologize for those mental images. I thought that they were amazing. Who am I? I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content manager over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on the internet as at lauren-urban.com, which is my website. And tonight I'm playing Carolyn Nebstern, who did not get to turn into a flat dinosaur, but did get to talk to and um, reason with both plants and animals. So it's a win. Mm -mm. <laughs> 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 Hello, everybody. I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on the socials at the Hope Lavelle. Uh, you can watch me as a dungeon master on Misfits of Alceta every Wednesday. And tonight I am playing Miss Robin Beckett, your favorite granny for hire. Yay! And I'm Deborah Ann Wall. I am your uh, storyteller for this evening with a with a DM tip. <laughs> Only uh, if, if you know, make your players have to do silly, <laughs> silly voices and spitting, but you have to do it too. That's always the <laughs> caveat. Um, wonderful. Thank you all so much for being here for our 70th episode of Children of Erte. So grab something warm to drink, get cozy, and we will settle in. So last week, uh, you finally made your way through the jungle. You dealt with the flat dinosaurs. You made your way across a mangrove grove uh, <laughs> and made it to the top of a waterfall where you then um, took counsel with Zola, the queen of Lorelia. Um, it went surprisingly well. There were some very excellent uh, lucky rolls going there. And uh, she essentially said that she believes that uh, Ivy and Toleron really started this, that they're the ones that left and she and Flores were merely in defense of their worlds. Um, and that if you could go and convince Flores to jo join our side, that would help. They could put an end to Ivy's ambition. Um, but also to be careful because if Ivy gets her hand on a scribe, that will give her access to all of the worlds and, uh, 
that would be bad. So she has offered to send you with one of her sentinels. Her sentinels are basically are like homing beacons. And once she sends them off, uh, they will continue to walk and walk and walk until they find the thing that they were sent for. So if she sends them to find Floris, they potentially could find a doorway if there is one and take you to Floris, the ruler of Etna. Um, so with that, she disappeared into her mud puddle and uh, you all set up a beautiful sand castle, watched the sun go down as you had some uh, psychedelic juicy fruit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> previous to that, however, Maeve, I know at the end of the day, you always like to check in with your ring. I do. Uh, so I, I take my ring and I say pulsar and sort of look into the stone and see um, those imperfections and that sort of swirling storm inside. Yeah. So you find yourself again in this strange layered world with this one. Um, this one, it's odd. It feels like actually the ground here is much lower than where you are. So again, you have to kind of really hold on to your sense of self to stay on top of this hill and not kind of fall down to the sandy bottom that is so much a different terrain of this other world. You can choose which one to step into. So as you hold on to who you are, you stay within the terrain of Lorelia for the moment. Um, a voice does not come to you, but I'd like you to make a perception check. All right. 18. 18. You do notice that the stars in the sky of this world align with those of Lorelia. And that as you look through this sort of veil of of this world, that little shimmering uh, space, it makes two stars shine more brightly. And they are at opposite ends, far, far apart from one another on either side of the night sky. Huh. I sort of look at the locations of each and is there anything particular about the constellations? I mean, obviously the sky of Lorelia is yeah, Different. you you can give me a nature check. Okay. Not that. Yeah, I'm not very good at that. It's a it's a very different type of world here. It's a, a very different stars. type of world. You know, they they're shining. They shine more brightly than the others. Um, and it's just sort of a like um, in the way that like the North Star shines mm -hmm. brighter. You know, they aren't like pulsing or anything and that maybe or or the way that mars has a little red hint of color to it there's just something a little different about these particular ones and, and again this sort of like if you were to put a a red um uh filter over something it might make certain colors pop it's almost mm -hmm. like this world gives the sky a bit of a filter and it makes those two stars pop and i think Maeve sort of inadvertently reaches up and, and rubs her necklace mm -hmm. and as, as she looks along and sort of in her mind just instinctually the way she always does does her starlight star bright first stars plural i suppose i see tonight and and makes a wish uh to get safely at, to etna i suppose in this case okay and with that you come back join in the uh <laughs> psychedelic uh <laughs> ayahuasca this is experience fruity. <laughs> fruity juicy experience going on this evening um as you all then sort of fall into slumber beneath the lorillian stars um in the morning when the sand castle has disappeared and you wake up all feeling full and rested and satiated and, and safe in a way that maybe you haven't felt in a long time. Um, Zola emerges from beneath. She even stretches up. <gasps> she opens her mouth. She has no teeth. It's all just sort of dripping mud um, and bits of log uh, that are kind of lodged in. If she were to have a jaw and it were, you know, you'd see tree roots and things kind of growing within her. Um, and when she stands up this time and stretches, she goes, you know, we, she was 120 feet last time. She stretches up to 
400 feet, as if really she could kind of keep growing as big as she wanted to, just drawing earth out of the ground. But she again kind of settles back down to that 120 feet so she can kind of look down on you, but not be, um, you know, too far away. Um, <clears throat> and she, you know, kind of looks over to Neb, sees that you're not touching a tree or anything at the moment, and says, Rest good. Yes. As well as she can in common in, in English. So good. <laughs> yes. I will, not leaving my locked gaze with Zola, reach over and touch that nearby tree again. And through, through the tree, one more time, become translator. A absolutely. It was very, very nice. Thank you. Rumble, rumble, as you kind of feel that connection happen through all the mycelia of the, the earth through into her. Um, just, good, you will need your strength. Um, so she sort of reaches back behind her, plucks up, you know, one of these rock spiders dangling by one of its five legs and sort of places it on her top of her hand. It scurries around. On her, it's, a, you know, like one of the tiny little spiders that just sort of dances around on the <laughs> arm, crawling in that way, and sort of looks to you and says, Are you ready? As ready as we're going to be, right? <laughs> yeah. She looks to the spider and just sort of neb you hear her sort of say find Floris. but the rest of you almost hear more like a hissing like she's almost imitating sounds of air or or wind and that and it kind of the spores on its back light up a little bit as if it's kind of taken the message she picks it up again by one little delicate needle leg, places it down by you, and without paying you much attention, it starts to walk off into the jungle. Oh. Well, there's our ride. We're following it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She, she, she says, I give you my blessings. And sort of you can feel again the kind of calming presence of this world that as long as you do not harm the creatures around it beyond necessity it will not harm you as this spider creature kind of takes you down you get the sense that it's kind of you know if, if it had a nose it would be smelling but it's it senses its spores every once in a while it kind of stops and like spits out a little bit of spores that seem to like taste the ground as it, it tastes the air as it kind of spins around and then it chooses a direction and goes in that it's kind of sensing what direction to go as it brings you down past the the large pool where the waterfall falls over um and it pauses there a moment to try to get its bearings um the water here is cool and clear um it's you know right at, at the feet of zola and uh it, the 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 pressure from the waterfall keeps it from flooding with uh silt and soil nice clear water okay this water is really clear right okay so <laughs> um as we're i guess walking along um Frizza just stops for a minute to admire the water and she i mean she's really awake but you know, she's sort of just like stiff and she just decides to look over into this water because she hasn't really seen herself in, yeah. a, in a while. And she's like struck by how, you know, different she looks. She looks like her, but she definitely looks a little bit more ferocious. And she says to herself, wow, I'm looking, uh, looking kind of feral, but she's not, she's not sad about it. She just sort of like, this is what I am now. And she's like, if I, I look like this when I walked into a courtroom. I'd probably subdue my opponent into settlement in any in any case. <laughs> and she she just gets her axe like absentmindedly and just sort of drags it sharpened first like through mm. the pond. And it, you know she she's still looking in the water. And as the water ripples behind her axe, she notices that her face begins to change a little bit. And she's just looking at it curiously, and she noticed that her face looks a little bit older, a little bit older. Mm. And she's like, 
just curiously. But then she notices that her eyes, that familiar turquoise blue, that is what Furs is named after, her eyes are brown. And then the face that she's looking at, a slight smile <laughs> sort of crosses that face. And Fruza doesn't jump, but she's like just transfixed by this. And as she's watching this, this face that looks almost like her, but a little bit older with this curious smile on her face, the water next to that face ripples. And I'm almost like out of the darkness behind the first figure. She sees the face of Casey Armstrong, her mother, her adoptive mother. And the two sort of figures, the two women are standing next to each other. And they look at each other. Her mother nods. And they both turn back and look at Feruza and smile. And Bruza jumps back like, whoa. And just as fast as they appeared, it disappears. And Fruza is just seeing her own face again. She was like, mom? And then she reaches in her pocket and she pulls out the rest of that, uh, I don't know, juicy fruit that Neb gave her. <laughs> and she like tosses it to the side. It was really strong. <laughs> In her head, she's just sort of wondering what she just saw in the water. Was it hangover or? That's what she's, yeah. She's like, was it a hallucination? She's like, why did I see my mother's face and someone else's? And she walks back over. So it. as as you take that with you, Feruza, mm -hmm. and you begin following this rock spider into the jungle. Um, describe to us a little bit, how has Feruza changed? What are we, what are we seeing? What is, how is she evolving? Okay, so one thing I've mentioned in the past couple of uh, sessions is that Feruza is definitely bigger. And when she gets angry or is about to fight, yeah. she looks even bigger. She's definitely, you guys have noticed this, but you're so used to changes that you don't even think to bring it up anymore. Um, her skin is much paler. And when she's raging, her skin can almost look like it blends into the sky. Um, <laughs> her eyes always flash with the same familiar electricity. Her hair is wild. Um, the biggest difference is just that the semi-confident, super scholastic Feruza that you guys knew all along, her bearing is being has been replaced by this almost extremely confident, strong, standing character. Um, mm -hmm. And she almost has willingly like stepped into that sort of new headspace. And you, you've seen her evolve into it. She doesn't really know, but you guys can definitely sense it. There's like a power in her that has come out of all of this and it's changing her. Mm -hmm. As you all continue to walk through following and Feruza's contemplating this, um, a few hours go past. You are chowing down on that juicy fruit to keep yourselves uh, satisfied here and uh, comfortable. And uh, one of these sort of flash rains comes through. Uh, there's no rain, you know, it's just the, the sunlight streaming through and then suddenly a downpour. As some of you find leaves and things to, to um, uh, you know, get underneath and kind of protect yourself while you wait for this pass to pass. Robin, you look down at your familiar old yellow rain boots that have gotten you through thick and thin as the water begins to rise around them, your feet in a puddle splash a little bit. Can you give us a little sense of where Robin is in this moment and, and what changes are happening for her? Um, Robin is, uh, she loves the rain. So this just little uh, spring shower or whatever that, you know, comes and goes just it makes her feel refreshed. And as she looks at her boots, uh, she notices they look a little fatter. They're, they're <laughs> a little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier. And um, 
they they still shine like little like beautiful rubber yellow rain boots um unchanged uh in that way but uh she starts to look at her skin on her her arms and her hands and uh she's starting to see that while she has the wrinkly skin of an 80 year old woman uh it feels a little tougher she kind of presses on it and still has wrinkles but it just feels like she could take a hit without getting bruised maybe it's a little tougher um and her fingernails have grown just a you know uh abnormally long she's like, oh <laughs> i need to trim those um and she kind of takes off she's using her hat kind of as like a rain cover um but as she's feeling it she takes it off and looks at it and she realizes that there's now a rainbow of colors of flowers, just like where there was just one red flower. And then, and then before there was a blue and a yellow, uh, now there's a green flower and a, and a purple flower and a pink flower. And it just kind of emulates this kind of magical, beautiful rainbow-ness. And she, she like looks at that and she smiles and she puts it on and, and then she thinks, I should look at my backpack. <laughs> and she pulls out her, her backpack and sure enough, it's bigger. Uh, it's more rounded, almost like a shell. And every patch that was on her bag has almost solidified in these like these like pieces of the shell, creating like a kind of just a nice strong rounded a uh, backpack that she's noticed as she puts it on she's like oh i feel like a turtle <laughs> she <laughs> wears it. Like, oh i'll just crawl around uh but she's lo she loves it and she's like mm -hmm. starting to feel a lot more comfortable in her skin <laughs> so the rain stops you continue to walk and it is night you have trekked all day following this rock spider, this shirok through the jungle. Um, you make your, your sand castle settle in. Maeve, if you take another look through, you know, in, through your ring, ring world, um, you notice this time that same as before, no sound, but the sheen across the sky has lit either two different stars or the same stars, but they are closer together as if they are migrating slowly but surely towards one another. Um, and there's no one responds if I call out, right? No one responds if you call out at this moment. Is there anything else that I've noticed that's changing in here? You can give me a perception. Okay. Uh, 23. So beyond the terrain, you know, definitely there is terrain difference between Lorelia and this world, and it doesn't always match up. And as I said, you can choose. But you look up and you notice that from your memory of this, this Lorelian sky, um, that seems to have stayed in, you know, in relation. The, the stars that are being highlighted in this ring plane, this other world, um, are not fixed in the same way that the rest of this sky is. So hmm. these, these stars either belong to another realm or they are not fixed in the sky with the other stars. Um, is there... Do I get a particular kind of feeling from these stars? Like, insight. do they make me let's, feel? A, let's insight okay. some stars. <laughs> insight some stars. <laughs> let's insight some stars. I'm very good at that, but let's see. Yeah, that's a 10. Um, nothing beyond what your natural instinct was, which is that these are, these are, these are wishing stars. These are the brighter stars in the sky that look over you. Do they feel like eyes? Do they feel like, <laughs> I mean. I, with a 10? I don't know. With a 10, what, I don't what know. What do you think? <laughs> well, well I, I think I was, I think there were questions <laughs> of like, do I get a feeling from them? Like the an feeling, emotional reaction? The emotional, yeah, the like, emotional feeling is, is, 
okay. is a childlike, innocent, not not scary. I mean, there's there's that that tension of like when you're young and you don't know. You look you know, up at the sky; it's big. Yeah, <laughs> it's big and scary, uh, but it's not threatening okay. in that way. Um, uh, you know, with the ten, I will allow for that. Um, okay. And with that, Maeve, when you wake up in the morning, having had this experience and slept through the night and, um, you know, we start to follow this uh, rock creature again, um, what do you notice about, what do we see in Maeve? What has changed? Um, her vault? So Maeve's, uh, Maeve's feet, it's it still... She's still wearing boots, but they're sort of smaller and smaller as mm -hmm. time has gone on. They've kind of shrunk. <laughs> she still has that steel-toed boot um, that clacks on the ground as she walks. Uh -huh. um, originally, it was the sound of the high heel, but now it's these rubber-soled boots. But they they still will occasionally make sort of a clacking sound as she walks. Um, and there are places in her pants where um, there are slashes, where they, there, there are tears. And... Um, you know, there's there's normal. You haven't had access to a razor in a while. Um, <laughs> that's not what's going on anymore. Um, there is she, she is she is fuzzy now. She is she's got fur happening, um, and um, she moves in a way that is is a little bit more. Confident isn't the right word, um, but with a bit more forward motion mm. to her. Um, it's less... Trepidatious isn't the right word either, but she seems to be more comfortable with forward motion. Um, and certainly when she was swinging from vines and things like that... <laughs> There was almost a sense of glee and joy in that. Um, and she has her horns, which are in these sort of striated layers. You know, that first mm. layer with the, the runic pattern of Steve, the second layer with the showers. Um, and it seems to be in this same sort of moonstony, um, grayish, glimmering purples and greens, um, bouncing the moonlight. Um, as her hair gets wilder and wilder and her ears poke out a little lower than they started there a little bit. Um, and uh, with all of her piercings and everything poking through as she sort of just moves with a little bit of a different kind of confidence and a bit of a different bearing. Um, hmm. Yeah. And, and finding your way quite easily through this terrain and, and using your arms to swing around things if need be. And it's sort of a, yeah, that glee that you're describing. Yeah, almost um, like a, almost like a, a, a pirate on a, a deck of a ship. Sort of <laughs> yeah. Situation. Every, every part of you feels natural and sort of reaching out. Um, as you are moving through now, the more hours, there's still, you know, this is going, you know, quite a long trek through different types of terrain. You are seeing just wonders of this, this world, uh, not least of which um, is the fauna. And uh, Neb, you have just encountered all kinds of new variations. Many of them are quite similar to creatures you have seen on Earth, um, but then the others are, are similar but with interesting weird little variations either they're too big or too small or one feature is very different um uh, and yeah as you're kind of taking in all of these these different creatures and, and looking at yourself and and starting to feel like who are you and 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 who are they in these different worlds what do we notice about about you so definitely in the last couple of nights as we've been all basically resting at the same time and not having to worry about anything. And especially that night where we knew Zola was keeping an eye on us. Um, and Neb has definitely taken time to see what she can change into. And part of it is just experimenting with 
what she can do and what she can picture and what what are her limitations and what can she do now and then also part of it is every time she comes back she just checks where all of these scales are and when we got caught in that little bit of a rain shower she was taking advantage of it to like wash her clothes and <laughs> rinse a few things off and you've probably all noticed that while well, her right arm has been the the main one covered in these shimmering blue turquoise green ish scales it's now traveled up and across her back and it's coming down her other arm as well and up the back of her neck and during the rain, as she's just kind of uh, wringing out her shirt and wringing out her pants and everything, and she's shaking one of her feet because, like, I think I got something in my, my shoe, and it just feels <laughs> weird. And it's the leg that also is just covered in these thick scales, and eventually she peels the shoe off, and her foot is way more reptilian now it it has claws and that extra toe and as she <laughs> manages to get the the shoe off and it's like oh my foot was the problem in the shoe that's what was stuck in there and there's a she spends a little while like weirdly walking because now she's like one shoe and this other foot and one shoe and this other foot but the more she gets used to feeling the ground under her feet even if it's you know swamp even if it's something else it just it feels good to dig in and it just feels more comfortable and it, it's almost now she's going through to practice what she can change into now even more just to make these changes happen just to get to the other foot so that she can have both of them be the same because this is kind of cool um and yeah it's that wonder is still there but there's a bit more of a uh it's not calculated as much as it's intense study of uh, just she's kind of forcing herself to not be talking to everything as we go by but as she sees these different animals as she sees all the different things she's just really focused on making as close a, of an inspection as possible she could picture it in her head because maybe i can't do this now but maybe this is something i can turn into later or maybe this is something that i want to be later so it's it's a lot more just uh her quietly in getting joy out of things um and then yeah every time she finds a new scale she's happy <laughs> so that composition notebook is just sort of getting filled and filled and scribbled on and there the nub of your pencil is getting smaller and smaller yeah, i have to um, find a new pencil catalog all the interesting new things that you're finding and she's finding it easier and easier. Like every time yeah. she comes across something, she kind of is figuring out what to look for and what to pay attention to and what are the hard things to hold on to in her head when she wants to turn into something. And she's getting better at it. Yeah. So you spend yet another night, another full day hiking through the jungle here, making your sand castle. Maeve, you have a very similar experience of the night, but now again, they have moved a little bit closer. Um, so it does seem as if they are are tracking closer to one another and will eventually meet or pass. You wake up in the morning and as the sandcastle disappears and the sun begins to rise, a herd of literal apatosaurs crosses your path in the field oh. in front. Uh -oh. Silas, you open your eyes to a scene out of Jurassic Park. Uh, it, they, they, these, these are not flat dinosaurs. These are not <laughs> strange, wonky. Di these not are pseudo dinosaurs. Not pseudo dinosaurs. <laughs> they are as you might have imagined them, with maybe some difference. There might be some feathers. There might be some different coloration than you've seen in the books. Um, but they are apatosaurs. They are long, graceful necks, eating leaves out of the tall jungle trees. So as Silas sees this and starts to think about the journey that he has been on, can you tell us a little bit about how you have evolved? So uh, Silas, first of all, as uh, he sees this initially, 
uh, one of the things that's been happening for him over you know the last um, you know, week or two, especially, is um, it, it's almost like um, excess magical or psychic energy is sometimes <laughs> like kind of just uh, you know leaking out almost a little <laughs> bit, um, and uh, and it, you know it's especially happening when he is um, you know kind of uh, you know focusing inwardly and as that is happening um you know there's this faint but it becomes a little bit stronger uh when silas realizes that it's happening but as the uh you know dinosaurs are walking across there's the da -da 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 -da, <laughs> like and you know very legally distinct version of yes uh th this uh, <laughs> this uh classical soundtrack uh you know rising and kind of whispering on the air and um you know silas again doesn't really um you know get on the ground much anymore but um for this he actually lands for a second mm. and he and he's like he's he's kind of you know feeling like he's gonna hyperventilate for just a second and uh and then he uh you know eventually remembers oh yeah you know head between the knees head between the knees and he like you know kind of bends bends down um and um he then he starts to uh, you know, try to approach them, you know, carefully, fly amongst them, um, you know, see if he can get close enough to touch one, but, you know, not, in a, um, you know, hey, I want to, to get you kind of way. Um, but, um, uh, you know, as that's happening, another thing that, you know, Silas has been doing, because every morning on this journey, after he has found this power, um, he, you know, has started meditating, and, and he's mm -hmm. not been an expert about this at all um and so he's kind of been just feeling it out trying to to understand like um you know what this is how he is accessing uh you know whatever this power is he's seen others uh access it in you know seemingly different ways that just don't feel like they would work for him um you know and and basically um as he's been meditating uh, accidentally or just through diligence or relentlessness um, it, it's like he's starting to access something else and uh, you know essentially as he is you know sometimes as he is traveling there are these uh, times that uncharacteristically for Silas everybody knows that he goes uh, you know very very quiet and it's not um, you know you, you, you kind of begin to realize that it's probably not just attention span uh, you know, issues or anything that it's uh, that like literally his mind is somewhere else. And um, and as that has been happening, um, you know, he, he's told, uh, you know, his uh, his friends here, um, you know, kind of what that feels like for him. And, you know, he'll, he'll kind of tell stories of, you know, I call it the astral plane because it's basically like what Professor X used to uh, like, you know, do you remember Cerebro? It's like, you might have watched the movies, but like in the comics, Cere Cerebro actually worked like this. And he's like talking about, you know, projecting your mental self into these other places. And, you know, what Silas sees is this, um, th this emptiness that feels more filled than any emptiness he's ever come across uh that mm. that you know if you're just looking with your eyes it looks like this just giant expanse of nothingness and um but you know if you're looking with your mind it feels like there are blazing stars there's light everywhere silas has um you know occasionally picked up on uh you know the the mind and he can't control any of this part but it's like he he picks up the mind possibly of a creature far away and a lot of times hmm. he doesn't even understand what that is uh but but it, it he feels like it's this entirely other place and he is becoming convinced that that's where his power is coming from and the more familiar he can come uh become with that place the more he can access that power and so that's where the meditation that he's been trying to do um he's uh he's starting to figure uh, that out you know little by little and, um, you know, this last evening, as they uh, slept before he encountered his first dinosaurs, and this is the thing that's crossing his mind as he's playing, really just trying yeah. to play 
uh, with these, uh, you know, small, uh, long necks here. Um, you know, as, as he's out there, um, he is, um, he, he can swear that as he was projecting his mind out there, um, he, he heard someone very familiar to him, um, which was Marion. Mm-hmm. And he is convinced he heard them on earth, you know, somewhere. And again, he could not communicate. He could not touch it. Um, but there was something, you know, whether he dreamed it or not, he thought that she was okay. And, um, and as, um, as he is playing with the dinosaurs, uh, he can't help but smile for, you know, that reason. And also the fact that he's playing with these dinosaurs. I gotta ask if if we've got a moment, uh, you'll, Neb will come up as you're trying to see these dinosaurs because she's been studying them too, because you've asked. Oh yeah. And she'll come stand next to you and you'll definitely notice she's once again, a little shorter than, you know, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't think she could get any shorter, but she did. And she'll kind of gently bump up against your side and say, they're really pretty, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've seen some really wild things while we've been out here, but, but I've got to say like, this takes the cake for I, mean, I, I, you know, when, when I when I was talking about this all the time, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. And then when Crash started talking about dinosaurs, and then it was just a huge manta ray, I was like, "Oh, come on, man!" Like, you know. But then, like, no, these these like, I mean, they might not be biologically the same species, but basically, they're dinosaurs. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I, did you were you trying to make friends with them, or did you just want to hang out with them? Well, I don't know. I mean, I can't talk to them. Well, I don't know if I can talk to them, but maybe, I don't know, we can give it a try. And, and Neb is going to put her hand on your, kind of your upper arm. And what she's going to try to do is either speak to or become one of these creatures. But as she's holding on to your arm, she remembers like days and days and days ago when you, when we were talking overnight about uh, turning into a dinosaur and how she was trying to see if you could do it. And something about this moment, instead of it, her picturing this creature in her mind and her turning into it, she pictures it in her mind and you turning into it. Uh, and uh, Adam, will will Silas accept a spell being cast on him? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if if he believes that's coming from you and not someone else, <laughs> yes, he will. Oh, yeah. Um, and so all of a sudden you feel your body grow and change and morph as, um, it's not quite the same as what Neb can do herself, but she's managed to help you turn into one of these creatures. It, um, <laughs> into a long neck? <laughs> So well, yeah. Of of the many creatures that, so that so the, yes, <laughs> good. The specifics of this spell is I one of the ones that I can help you turn into is a brontosaurus, and this sounds like it's about the same. It's yeah, so it's a little bit smaller, but yeah, yeah. And so like, there's a moment of we're both surprised as this is happening, and then as Neb is figuring out what she is doing, it's just the grin on her face as you just turn into a giant dinosaur. Uh, you are nowhere near as smart as you were before, though. <laughs> and Neb will look up at you and be like, oh, it's your dream come true. You did it. Can I talk? Or, no. Or... Okay. You now so, have, the sti- you, you have the statistics of a dinosaur. Uh, you, you still know who your friends are. You are still here, but um, I believe your intelligence is now a four. Uh, you can't talk. You can probably talk to the other dinosaurs, but you have no you, idea what I'm saying. <laughs> there's a bewilderment, but also I'd say some fun in all of this. Um, as you, the other dinosaurs sort of sense your shift here. They make some noises and their long necks swoop around to kind of look at you, a stranger in their midst. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm trying to do whatever form of communication uh, that I don't know if it comes naturally to me or not in this form. I'm making some sorts of noises, uh, no matter what. 
back to you and and you do get a sense of like eaton's done here moving on kind of thing like a you know a grazing herd uh, I, I i basically do the apatosaurus um version of are you gonna go my way like i'm i'm trying to like figure out like are they headed anywhere similar to where we're we're headed right now or is this going to be you know a, a short little visit um they seem to be kind of you know the, the 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 rock spider is doing its spore thing and sensing and starting to move a little bit and then and kind of keeps going they're kind of interweaving with each other so you can walk as a dinosaur I, i'm, a I'm going to keep going as a dinosaur mm -hmm. i uh you know basically turn back to neb uh for a second and I just, you know, I mean, it's got to be a groan of satisfaction. Like, um, <laughs> you know, if, if there's a smile that can be had on, yeah. its, uh, you know, slit like mouth, then, um, then that is happening. And um, I, um, if you ever um, have seen somebody messing around with a 3D model of, uh, you know, dinosaur dancing, then you have about the closest version of that that you could imagine. Um, you know, like like there's a skip in the yeah. in the step um, <laughs> as, uh, as as Silas uh, Silasaurus is uh, you know uh, ranging with these uh, with these long necks. I'm gonna uh, come walking up next to Feruza as we're watching uh, si <laughs> Silosaur go have some fun. Well, I think I accidentally made him bigger than you. Sorry. You did that? Uh, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure I did that. I'm I can't be a hundred percent sure, but I was I was trying to turn into one, and then I th I I managed to figure out I'd turn him into one. I'm have so, I still have to. I'm like thinking about it the same way, like oh. when I turn into stuff, and I have to think about what I've turned into, and I'm I'm kind of concentrating on that, and I'm doing that now. So I wonder how long I can Ooh. keep him a dinosaur. This is interesting. That means something has happened to us here. You can now change us into things. Well, I creatures. I, I don't know if I want to change you into things. Yeah. As, <laughs> as it is. Um, so there is there is one problem. And Neb has been like listening to yeah. uh, Silosaur talk and realizing yeah. like, oh, wait. What? Um, you can't change him back. No, I can change. I'm oh. pretty sure I could just drop thinking about it and it'll be fine so usually when i change into things i can yeah. it's still me i'm still able to think and everything i'm getting yeah they're real loud uh, <laughs> i don't think silas got that though oh he's talking kind <laughs> of as smart as the other ones are just uh -oh. a dinosaur <laughs> just yeah so it's maybe... still him Oh, we're gonna have to convince him not to step on us or attack us. Maybe, maybe he's not smart enough to remember who we are. Uh, he seemed to recognize me. He's just very distracted by all the <laughs> roaring going on. Everybody walked like a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce is also looking at. Um, did you you took your shoes off, Neb, or no? Just just the one on her right just foot that okay. is now. Uh, that is now like a, a lizard's claw instead of a foot. I love it. Like a heroine in a rom com who took off one heel. And then, you know, <laughs> <It's one shot. laughs> so, so Farouza's just looking. She happens to look down at, I mean, well, now like a Neb's like little little lizard claw, and she's just gonna shrug her shoulder and uh, sort of lean down to you, Neb, and pull back. She doesn't. Oh no, she's wearing her tank top. So yeah, she just offers up her her strong forearm and you like in her like her veins it literally looks like lightning in the sky in her veins <sighs> and she's like we're definitely not in air tay anymore <laughs> no but it's amazing right yeah i mean and she just gestures to silence uh we're gonna talk book rights at some point all of us oh yeah i mean he's got the bunches of money to turn us <laughs> to, to, to make this whole thing a movie right I don't have bunches of money. That has bunches of money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do, do you want to be one too? Maybe I can, the two of you can talk to the rest of the dinosaurs and I can try. Can he, oh, wait, 
now that he's a dinosaur, he can actually talk to the rest of them or you're not sure if he can? Oh, no, I can hear them talking to each other. It's not the most interesting of conversations. It's mostly <laughs> there's this food over here. It's not a lot of food. Remember how you learned in, in science class how dinosaurs are real, real, real big, but their brains are not? Definitely smooth brains. They're they're focused on very <laughs> basic things, but they're having fun and, and Silas is yeah. having a lot of fun too. Do you want to try? Um, Fruza looks up at Silas and says, Maybe I'll sit this one out, but I definitely feel like Robin might want to be a dinosaur. There's something in me that maybe wants to be one. <laughs> I am a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Miss Robin? <laughs> Never mind. I think hey, in turtles are that old, yeah. Okay. There's a moment when Robin speaks up that uh, Neb hearing her say i am a dinosaur like sees the tougher skin and everything and mm. and gets distracted enough that she's going to lose concentration uh yeah. and silas you are no longer <laughs> a dinosaur you find yourself back to yourself oh i i'm sorry i uh i lost i lost track of what i was it, thinking about it, that's my bad it, it, it's okay i think i can still say goodbye to them and then silas just goes Whoa. <laughs> Like with minor illusion, I'm like amping up the volume and letting it kind of rattle in the chest a little bit. Oh yeah, as Your as you is amazing. Call that they do seem to kind of turn away, and the herd <laughs> follows another path. But you hear in the distance, <laughs> silhouetted against the now you know mostly risen sun as it's starting to come up into the sky. Um, as they leave in that direction. However, as you all sort of come back to yourself from this pleasant dinosaur experience, um, <laughs> you have lost sight of the chill rock. Uh oh, oh no! Hey, where's the where's the rock spotter, everybody? Oh uh, yeah, we were supposed to be concentrating on that too, weren't we? Oh. Would he leave us though? Would he just take off and leave us here? Do you think? Yes. Uh. <laughs> it's okay, everybody. Yeah. Uh, ho ho. Oh, <laughs> I am oh. so excited that I actually prepared this spell. <laughs> oh. Don't worry, I I lose my glasses all the time. I lose my keys. I lose sight of all sorts of stuff. I just, <laughs> let me let me think about this. And uh, Robin is gonna locate creature. Yes. <laughs> Woo! All right. Do I have to roll anything, or you just do it, or I um, go? Let's double check. <laughs> Um, I sense the direction of the creature as long as that creature is within a thousand feet. If the creature is moving, you know the direction of the move of uh, the movement. Great, yeah, it's not far at all. It's just the obscurity of trees and underbrush. It just kind of got out of your sight, and of course, it looks like everything around it. So the camouflage is really easy to happen. So you just catch it. You know, it's just right at the edge of. Um, so you can get everyone back on the path. However. Suddenly, it actually does disappear right in front of you, out of your line of sight, out of this locate creature. It is just gone. Is and this one of those? Yeah. To test back and forth. You want to give me a perception check? Uh, yeah. I, I, Whoever well, would like to. Uh, yeah, because I think Neb will think about that moment where we saw the other one. Uh, 25. A 25. As you go back and forth and look, you find again that narrow, if you could just find it and hold it, a little window. However, through it, all you see is sky. All right, well, the, the spider found it. It's right there. I'm glad that you're not a dinosaur anymore, Silas. I don't know if you would have hey, 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 Neb, seriously, I, I, I want you to, like, listen to my words very closely here. Is the greatest gift that oh, has ever given to me. The previous record holder was Action Comics number one. A lot of people don't think that I own it, but I do own it. I just don't let any of those filthy people that come into the comic store see it. But someone gave that to me one time. They were very special to me. They're no longer with us. Like, well, they're not definitely not with us here, this place, but I'm saying they're no longer like, like they're dead. That's what I'm saying. 
but they were very special to me. They gave me Action Comics number one. Now that is the first appearance of a superhero in a comic book. And what you just did right there to let me be a dinosaur for a few minutes beats that. Okay, so I am in your debt. I owe you one big time. I'll give you bunches of money if we can ever make it back to the world. I'll give you, I, I, I got your back in any way that you ever could want. Silas, uh, there's no owing. You know, we're all your biggest fan and you've already been there for all of us. And the next time you want to be a dinosaur, you just let me know. And hopefully <laughs> I can come up with, I can find a whole bunch more, but- I'm gonna try not to be too greedy, but listen, I thank you so much. And if anybody, and I'll, I'll take my eyes off the portal for a second and Silas and be like, if anyone <laughs> else wants to be a dinosaur, apparently I can do that too. I wonder if I can do that myself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Um, air. <laughs> air. Oh, oh, you found it? And, and Robin's going to start looking. Well, I think well. you found the chill rock that found it. So right. I, I think I think you're the one that found it. Oh. All right. Can you yeah. fit that bag through the portal, Miss Robin? It's definitely... With enough time... <laughs> <laughs> With enough time and some guidance from Neb, you're all able to find the spot where you can see just the narrow, you know, like a little door ajar. Mm -hmm. um, but again, through it, all you see is sky. You don't see any terrain from this vantage point. Do you think if we go through it, we're just going to fall? I didn't even think of that, but thank you for putting that in my head right now. <laughs> I mean, what? it's a well, land of air. Yeah. Yeah. We And when we were in the land of water with Ivy, it was mm -hmm. lots of water. Hmm. I mean, but obviously it's probably I not I mean, filtered. there's gotta be a ground somewhere, right? I unless, don't know. Unless every- Does there? Yeah, every unless... creature there doesn't, Need ground? Well, why would anyone need ground? What if there's no gravity? That would be helpful. Oh, yeah, the end. Oh, here we go. So let's try. <laughs> Wait, why don't we send Silas? Why don't course? those <laughs> things fly? I, 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 I think first. it's a good idea if I go through this, just in case. Now, Do you want it, to go through first? Let us know what's uh, there. Or come back. Uh, Let us know what's planet. there. I can't remember. Could we get back through it easily? Like when we well, got to Lorelia? I I don't know if we can, but I, I'm pretty sure that the spider creatures were either going back and forth, would come out and come back. So, Speaking of that, why hasn't our spider creature done that? Well, if, To be like, hey, just, you guys. Yeah, it's, it's, That I might mean not. that the spider just fell to its because death. Because its instruction it was to get to... It was to find uh, Fluris. Fluris. So okay. mm -hmm. I, I guess what I'm saying is I am happy to go through first, scout it out. I will do everything in my power to try to come back and tell everyone what I see. If I'm not back in like, I don't know, five minutes, then you take the ship and you come and rescue me. I don't <laughs> want to be like oh, stranded in that place. Okay. The ship? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Just that's a TV of course. Quote, movie quote. Oh, oh, here, wait. Also, take this. And I'm going to find wherever that piece of vine was that we were using uh, before yeah, 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 as our rope. And I'm gonna Do we hand... think that the dimensional forces are going to, like, snap this in two? I have no I idea. I guess we try. That's, <laughs> Again, that's what I, I figured. Might as well try. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. All right. I, I actually tie it off at my waist. Okay. I hand the okay. other end to Feruza. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Scouting mission 0536 commence. <laughs> and, All uh, right. Silas is going to try to thread the sheet or what, whatever yep. is going to happen here. Back and forth, it takes a little time, but you're able to sort of find it. And suddenly, he's almost as if he's sort of sucked through. Uh, Silas, you immediately feel an enormous force <laughs> slam against you. Feruza, strength saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Handed it to the right person. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, like, oh, this is a good one because it's an advantage and it's plus six. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, nineteen. Wait, no, that is a nineteen plus six. Woo! 
Um, you grab on, digging your feet into the earth beneath you. As Silas, you are whipped at the end of this rope by an extraordinarily heavy wind that is pushing you in one direction. You do notice there is ground down. This is a door sort of up in the air. Um, but the wind is so strong that gravity is absolutely taking, or is, is stronger than gravity for you as a flying creature in this moment. Um, how, how far does the ground sink? About 20 feet down. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. And there is a rock behind it that kind of brings it up as if as if whoever made this door could have climbed to the top of the rock, made it in midair um, as a trap, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you are <laughs> currently dangling through this vine that Feruza has through the, you know, temporal door. Um, is it lit holding up? Holding on to you. Is it lit is up? It bright? No, yes. you can't see the door. Any okay, longer, I, I'm going. I'm going to um, uh, take out the ring. The ring just kind of floats uh, to the top of my pocket, and I am uh, casting light to try to see what I can see in the next, you know, twenty to forty. Feet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, there is light in this world. I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You can see through the door or not? No, you can't. So I can see the ground. You can see the ground. You can see the rock. This is. It's. It's. You don't see any sun necessarily. It's it's um, very gray, uh, barren desert landscape around you. Okay. There are a few scraggly little trees, tumbleweeds, and do, do sand. I see sand? Okay, you yeah. see sand okay. and rock. All right, and so sand, rock, uh, mm -hmm. desert type yeah. terrain. There's and you know then... there's sort of hills and dunes and ravines and things like that. But yeah, Got it. okay. Um, I am going to try to fly back to where I thought that was and start. Yes. Pulling yourself along, you know, <laughs> the try, rope. Trying to it. shimmy and shake or whatever I need to do. Okay, to great. Give me give me an athletics check as you pull yourself along the rope that Feruza is holding on to. Uh, <laughs> so, 15 plus 8 is... Uh, Okay, 23. 23 Deb is 23. standing there being yeah, like, come, come back to us, Carol Ann. Come on, come on, Carol Ann. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And Silas would appreciate it that. It's giving him Static strength. Yeah. I um, love it. Yeah, Silas, hand over hand as the wind whips your cape behind you, uh, your beard off to the side, which has grown long in the, in the weeks. <laughs> last shave, you pulling yourself... Argh, pulling it forward as you're just able to get back to where you think using whatever strength you have, you can just kind of get a sense of this door and pull yourself through it as you tumble onto the ground back in Lorelia. I like, this is a point of pride for Silas. Can I try to prevent <laughs> tumbling onto the ground? Uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll see. No <laughs> so... one's there to see it if you don't. <laughs> uh, that's a dirty 20? A dirty 20, yeah. Uh, so okay. as you pull yourself through the door, you know, the force of this is trying to sort of throw you towards gravity, but you have the power. Yeah, I'm going to do like Tom Cruise, uh, Mission Impossible, <laughs> like stop right before oh, the And then absolutely. like raise up. Yeah, okay. Oh. Um, you all take a look at him already. I mean, everything is just like sand and he's blown to the side his hair has like a big cowlick in it that moves off to one direction all of his clothing has just been whipped. um sand i hate sand it gets everywhere uh, it's a it's sandy place in so there. much sand it's 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 like a desert the winds are really really bad um the door is about 20 feet off the ground so um you know I think that maybe okay. I should go back through, see if I can get to the ground, and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, try to help people as they're coming through, like not, you know, die from the fall. But um, I am a fan of not dying. Me yeah. too. Generally, yeah. a solid plan. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, you know, you know how I can like make things sometimes. Like I've been telling you, all, you know, this astral plane. You know, yeah. that's my name for it. But like whatever that thing is, um, it's like I can pull things from there, and that's what made like the key for the boat. You remember that when I became like a certified yeah. water thief, um, like during all that. Um, oh, you did. 
I well, you have been graduated with the last has, like, a card in his wallet now. He's getting the punches on it for each of the I elements. Mean, I mean, seriously, like, Sweet I mean, water, that was some, some pretty, like, piratical stuff that happened right there. I mean, I now stole he's gonna a boat. Be an air thief. Yeah. Yes, I was. If you pull something out of your astral sea while you're in the air, in the air world, does that make you an air thief? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm probably going to do that just where I can check the box. So. <laughs> are you an air thief or are you an H-E-I-R thief? Oh, those? I don't know. Ooh. Yeah. Like that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we can figure that out later. But I guess what I'm saying is I could theoretically, you know, pull stuff out and craft up like, I don't know, like an air mattress that you could all fall on or something like an air mattress. Um, oh, can I mean, you do one of those big like hay bales that the video game people always jump on? Oh and... yes, yes. And you hear the <laughs> you you hear the thing that's not like what? an eagle, like the <laughs> or whatever, yeah. you know, like, yeah. a hay bale. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, I, I mean, buy you can it. jump any height as long as there's hay down there. Wait, you can <laughs> conjure up a hay bale. Well, I don't know. Like I can just make things sometimes, and so. I could certainly okay. now the one thing I will say is if this is a hay bale and it like gets loose, it's very windy there, so it may just blow all the hail away. Yeah. Or the hay away. Yeah, that makes sense. Is there a tree nearby this uh portal? Would a ladder yep. be a stronger Lots choice? Trees. Like a steel ladder like a, a ladder, ladder is a great idea. I could certainly make a ladder. Um Okay. I could certainly make a ladder now. Fire truck, steel. I guess I'm gonna have to thing. like yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to have to, like, hold it, though. Because um, I can't make a fire truck. I know that's too big. Um, <laughs> Is it future goals. Um, so why don't you make a ladder, and then we now know that we can string, essentially, this rope in between the portals, and it's not going to get cut off. Do yeah. we want to tie that to one of these trees so that as we go through, yeah. we've got the, the rope in our hand and your ladder, and then well, I can go through not with the rope. And then yeah. I can like string the vine through the ladder. And then that way, if somebody's on this side, like securing it, then it will like hold the ladder and kind of anchor it a little bit. I think we've got this figured out. <laughs> Me too. I can hold the ladder. Uh, well, I mean, somebody's got to hold the vine on this side still, right? Well, that's or... what the tree is no, for. The... Oh, okay. Yeah, let's tie it off against the tree. Miss Robin, mm -hmm. I trust your knots. I am oh. naughty. <laughs> <laughs> She's a naughty granny. Uh -oh. A hot naughty granny. Uh, let's say last week she was, she was sexy. Naughty. This week she's naughty. I'm here for all of it. Oh boy. I once I had an it. OnlyFans account. You know what? Honestly, <laughs> life goals. Don't don't check yeah. your Google history. <laughs> Robin has been history. life goals for all of us since the beginning. And there just continues to be life goals even yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be her when I grow up. Yeah, all right, naughty uh, granny. Hot, uh, hot, hot, hotty torty. Hotty torty. <laughs> um, uh, give me a survival check, please, for your nice knot. Yeah. Hot hotty torty. <laughs> uh, that is an eighteen. That's an eighteen. Pretty darn good. You loop it around a branch of a tree, give it a good strong knot. Again, kind of pulling, using like one foot to brace against one end as you pull with your teeth in the other hand, getting it all the fibers kind of interwoven, and uh, hand it back to Silas. Mm. All right, I'm going to tie it around my waist again, okay. um, you know, to, to go through with. And then I am going to shimmy, try to get through as best I can. You get sucked through again. Again, hit with that blast of wind that pushes you horizontal until you ooh, sort of, you know, get stuck at the end. Like, it, like you're trailing outside an airplane, basically, as it's kind of holding you your back. Now, some of your flight ability helps you to kind of, you know, orient yourself and keep yourself from, you know, you can kind of ride it like a bird a little bit. Like, um, like what, while I'm here, I'm going yeah. to just kind of like move my legs in the way mm -hmm. uh, very familiar stretches to me that I'm like trying to decompress the sciatica. Uh, uh, you know the side <laughs> nerve a little bit like because i'm like man this this kind of pressure i'm not gonna find this uh, you know oh yeah places and i'm just like 
you know, take, take you know, a, a good 90 seconds to get some yeah. really good stretches. Yeah. You feel a good inch and a half taller. It's just kind of, you know, loosened everything up. And even as you're testing that, you can feel that like skydiving, you can kind of use the current and the shape of your body to kind of adjust how it sort of lifts you up or pushes you down. You can almost kind of ride it like you're, you're you know, windsurfing or, um, you know, uh, what is the ski, you know, water skiing. Uh, I'm going to uh, descend and mm -hmm. try to step onto the ground. Okay. You find a way to kind of adjust your body and it just sort of, the the opposite of lift it kind of pushes you down the pressure until you're able to get your feet onto the ground now it's still windy down here but the intensity of the wind is much less so as you you can kind of walk forward and there is sand just blowing in your face but you can kind of just pull yourself it's difficult terrain you cannot move very fast but you can pull yourself to where you can see the vine reaching up and disappearing into a spot in the sky 20 feet above Okay, but I do see, do, do I get the sense that without the ability to, you know, telekinetically stabilize myself with the flight, mm -hmm. would the others be able to walk okay here? Um, yes, yes. Okay. It, it, there, okay. there is gravity. There okay. is, you know, it's just strong wind. It's going it. to push Perfect. you. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Yeah, all right. So I am actually going to go back up then, fly back okay. up a little bit. And then okay. I am going to start, uh, and this is going to, let me make sure that I know how long this is going to take. Um, <laughs> actually, I didn't tell them this, but I'm, <laughs> I, I am going to make this easier on myself. And this is going to take about 10 minutes to make this letter. <laughs> um, so um, so uh, uh, t 10 minutes plus six seconds. Um, and so um, as, as I am doing this, though, Again, I'm projecting my mind out uh -huh. there. It's almost like I'm pulling star stuff in <laughs> uh -huh. and like weaving this one of these you know nice firm steel ladders. Yeah. And as I'm uh -huh. doing it, I am um, you know looping the vine through through the rungs as I'm gotcha. kind of you know crafting this. But I'm doing it top down, where it's uh -huh. not like just going to spring into existence and then immediately like uh huh like uh -huh. Fl fly off. Is basically yeah. what I'm trying to. So as you are you are creating it, you can get a sense of yeah the pressures of the world on it. And you can tell that it's it's going to be affected by the wind as it gets stronger, and so you're you're weaving that vine in along the way. Once you get to the end of this, the casting of this, your ten minutes and six seconds, um, it's there. It's stable, but it's really it's stable because of that vine. The wind is pushing it, and the vine has moved all the way to the edge, and it's just the looping of that is keeping it from flying off. Um, so it is really much more like a helicopter rescue where that ladder comes down, and it's you know you can hold on to it, but it's in the breeze. So it's it's wanting to move, uh, you know, in there, but the, that vine is keeping it sturdy. Now all of you up top. You can see now, you know, you've been sort of waiting and watching the shift in how that vine is is reacting. It now seems kind of taut as if it's sort of, you know, attached to something on the other end. Yeah. And I, I am going to, uh, you know, um, act like Silas knows uh, Morse code. He does not at all. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but he is going to be like short, short, long, short. Like he's, he's like trying to like. <laughs> Make it look like he's sending some kind of message that, like, "Hey, I'm done." Down oh, here. you're <laughs> seeing like, rhythms wait, in wait. the. <laughs> Tell me what you actually say. <laughs> it's gonna be short, short, long, long. Short, 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 long, long, long short. <laughs> Does maybe <Mame? laughs> short, 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 long, yeah. long? Okay, and short, short, long. What was next? Short, short, uh, short. Oh, good Lord. I can't remember. Short, short, um, short, 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 short long, long. long. Yep. Maeve's like, U S A. Long, long, long. Yeah. <laughs> Maeve starts translating, Just going, hold on tight. <laughs> what? What? That's. Maeve is like speaking something? to you in, in, in your mind or something? 
and, and <laughs> Silas is actually like, well, yeah, you know, I thought we had a really good plan. He's like just talking to himself <laughs> down there. I thought we had a really good plan, but I didn't think about how to tell him when I was done with the ladder. You are noticing Maybe. some repetitive vibrations. <laughs> there, there, there are patterns of some there sort. There are patterns. Maybe he of some kind. Tell us. Uh, uh, under the, I, uh, <laughs> I say I'll go peek in and I'm happy to go first. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Okay. So, I'll be oh right behind God. you because I've got a I've got a a good idea of what I can do if things go bad. <laughs> so but should I go than, next to stabilize oh, the ladder anymore? Would it help? I don't know. It's up to you. A after I shake the ladder around, I mm -hmm. do go up to the top and hold it. Because, like, if they happen to come through and just, you know, Wilhelm scream, like, over me, oh, I'm right. trying to yeah, be yeah, ready yeah, 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 yeah. to, so, like, maybe try to grab them. So you are <laughs> the um, you are the anchor at the other end of Okay, the, okay, so, like, the vine. The, the vine, yeah, unless you want to, I mean, there's nothing else to tie the vine to here except you. Yeah, do, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is, yeah. if I'm up, can I make this... Like, would the wind make the ladder horizontal? Um, like, if it, I don't if care if the ladder comes the vine. up. Yes, if, if it broke free of the vine, it would go horizontal. But you're, the oh. vine, as long as you keep it taut with your strength on your side, it'll it'll hold the ladder in, basically in place. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is if I yeah. chose to fly up with the bottom yeah. of the ladder yeah. and it was horizontal... Oh, I see. Um, yes, like, you could do that. It, it would still be on the vine that way. Yes, right? it yeah. would still okay. be on the vine. That, that's what I'm actually going to do, because if they oh. come through anyway, they'll at least have something in front of them that they okay. can try to, to grab. And then once they're there, I'll fly the bottom of the ladder down. Gotcha. So, Silas, you fly up lifting this ladder, quite literally now like a rope bridge, uh, from the, <laughs> the hole in the sky over to you. And you're just like... Again, this is where the, the wind is really strong, though, so I'm going to need an athletics check for you to yeah. stay in one place. Up oh, here. Yeah. oh, wow. That one's 20 on the die. So that's Woo! Like 28. Silas, I don't know. I mean, you don't need to flap your wings or anything, but you just... <laughs> <laughs> muscles up as you hold resisting against all of this wind <laughs> as is Feruza going or is Robin going first? Yeah. Um, I mean, Feruza. Think, Feruza. Okay, yeah. Okay, Feruza, mm -hmm. you come forward, you find the opening, you stick your head through immediately, <laughs> your hair right across your face as it's pulled up in this direction. You pull down to kind of grab onto the ladder as much as you can as you... <laughs> Try to stick yeah. your hair out of your face. <laughs> you look across and you see Silas dun, 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 holding his hands on the cape in the wind. Cape in the wind, flying <laughs> beard and hair going this direction. With his hands on his hips as he tries to hold his core and the thing. To, and this this ladder straight out ahead of you. Um, as you pull yourself out onto the ladder, I'd like an athletics check, please. <clears throat> Oh boy, that's a oh, that's a good one for me. That's a good one for you. Okay, let's see. Oh my god, seventeen. Hey. Nice. Yeah. You hold on, keeping your body low, down close yes. to the ladder, so that you you know get as little uh, you know uh, force as possible. Uh, you gotta yes. hold on, pulling your whole body out onto the ladder, which now you have to climb out like ten feet to get your whole body out there. Yeah. Um, all right, Silas, what do you want to do? She just climbs um, down the ladder. Oh, but she looks. Well, it's, she it's over. horizontal yeah. right now. Yeah, as as, oh soon, as soon as he sees that she has purchased, then he's going yeah. to start flying down. And you know, okay. I don't. I I imagine it's probably hard to hear us uh, yes. uh, speaking. Up there, so oh, I'm hard. just yeah. gesturing. So he starts to cantilever the ladder down, which you are facing this way. <laughs> so suddenly now you are face forward. Well, I mean, I'll I'll like I I know, I, I'll, I'll like. You know, show her like, "Hey, I'm gonna go down with yeah. it." You know, like that kind of thing. You're holding on. You maybe I'll even I'll even offer this for you as a badass. You let your legs go so they whip around, and you use your strength to kind of right yes. yourself in the correct position. Yeah, wrong body. You like brace yourself. Like, oh, oh yeah. It's very Mission Impossible. It's very <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise, except it's Feruza. Um, 
and yeah, you kind of let the wind guide you around. Your hair is just mm, whipping around. She looks over at Silas, tree. like standing proud against them. <laughs> yes. You climb down, getting your feet onto yeah. the dusty, sandy um, ground here. And, you know, mm. there is still wind here and it's still whipping at you, but it doesn't have the same force to kind of knock you over as long as you yeah. are sort of conscious of it as you start to try to pull the hair out of your face. And then Silas is going to, uh, you know, get up as close as he can. And again, I don't know if she can hear me or not, but he's gesturing and he's like, stay down here and hold it. Like, hold it tight <laughs> down here. I'm going to go right. up. And then, yes. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that, like, I'm gonna go up to help whoever's gotcha. next, but I want her so, to hold the yeah the rope down the, here at the bottom. Okay. So, um, for Ruza, we're gonna get an athletics check from you for holding the ladder now. Perfect. It's good stuff. This is good stuff for me. It's good stuff. I'm oh, impressed with this problem six, solving. Thirteen plus you six, get? nineteen. 19. Nice. So yeah. yeah, so you get down there, he gives you the rope, you wrap it around your own waist, tying it off, stand on it, grip either side of the ladder and are able to keep it pretty steady using the vine as well as your own strength in that, yeah. you know, diagonal position up to the door. As yeah. Silas, you are now free to fly up there. We're going to keep your old athletics check. You are in the zone. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely helping by grabbing onto the rope yeah. as I'm going up, as, as well as up there. Okay. Good. And then I'm just looking for somebody, like any part of them to emerge. Next. And I'm basically trying to like, you know, gra grab to just assist to stabilize them. Fan sounds great. Uh, Robin will go next. Okay, Robin Yay. keeps her head through immediately all the loose skin. <laughs> <laughs> just flapping in the wind. All of the flowers, a couple of petals kind of fly <laughs> off in that direction. Um, you're just holding your glasses onto your face. <laughs> <laughs> pulls all the skin around. Silas, you get a, a hand around to maybe her backpack to sort of hold on to her uh, and help her through. Um, let's do, we'll do it because it'll be fun to just see how it goes. Let's get an athletics check for your climb down there, um, uh, Robin. Athletics, great. Oh, oh uh, minus one. That's an 11. An 11. Silas is there to help because if pretty rough as you start to pull yourself your feet get off you sort of grab on one arm flies silas kind of pulls you back on to make sure you're still there he helps you down um and eventually as you move your way down the ladder and uh the wind lessens a little bit you're standing next to feruza and you look over your glasses are you know askew to the side and there's <laughs> sand in your hat uh as you kind of settle back down you enjoy feeling the weight beneath your now enlarged feet <laughs> and who is next <laughs> silas you go back up same routine yeah yeah same routine babe you want to go next or you yes, want to be the... i pull out my pocket knife yes. oh, and i'm going to go ahead and uh open it up and it turns into a meat hook Ooh, oh, and nice. I'm going to use that as a backup, just going down yeah. the ladder, just so Love in case I don't, uh, I don't strong <laughs> very well. <laughs> I have a backup. So um, Silas, Farusa, uh, and Robin, you now see Maeve's face <laughs> appear again. The hair, and if you had a scarf or anything, it would blow very romantically My sash. in the wind. Your sash, yes, <laughs> you know, fluttering as if you were atop the the crow's nest of a ship, uh, mm -hmm. fluttering in the wind, uh, very regal. Um, and with your hook, you can hook it on to the ladder <laughs> rungs if you would like. But we're still gonna go with an athletics check as we figure out how you make your way down. My sense is probably not very well. <laughs> well. Yeah, about the same as Robin in 11. Okay, great. <laughs> well, you hook on, and as soon as you sort of give your weight over again, the air takes you to the side, the hook holding on, and Silas is able to come and kind of push you back onto the ladder, which you now wrap your legs around to kind of give you that extra, you know, strength. And it's one hand over hook, hand over hook, hand over hook. Captain Hook, as you pull yourself <laughs> down to the bottom. Uh, at this point, the hair that was already dislodged from your braids is just <laughs> wild. Crazy. Um, 
you know, just volume out of an Herbal Essences commercial um, mm -hmm. as you land on the ground, feel the sand beneath your feet. And Neb, you are the last in Lorelia to take one last kind of look around you. Um, I'll be back. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. Are. Gotta go visit Pivim, but first, <laughs> one, more, one more world. And Neb is gonna be very uh, conscientiously thinking about just something in the back of her head in case things go wrong. And is gonna grab the rope, <laughs> the vine rope, and yep. try to go on in. You slide through. Uh, you have, you know, less sort of loose, uh, windy, blowy, <laughs> right? So, so again, yeah. it's gonna smack you in the face and you're just gonna like, oh, I don't have to close your eyes instantly as just wind and sand start to, uh, you know, sort of hit you as you reach forward, trying to find, you know, holding onto the rope and reaching to sort of hold onto the ladder and you feel Silas there again, you know, grabbing onto your t-shirt or something to kind of have a little brace. Uh, give me an athletics check, please. So I rolled a four. Um, Plus anything? <laughs> I mean, so I rolled a five and a negative one. And it's a four. Gotcha. And it's a four. Mm -hmm. um, do I end up losing purchase on the ladder? So as you pull the rest of your body around, you twist in just the wrong way that you give it a flat surface. And the force of that pulls your body right off of that ladder as you start to fly in the direction. Silas, I'll take a strength saving throw from you. Because I, I will do my reaction to this because Neb kind of well. thought that things could go wrong. Yeah. That's a 16. That's a 16. You're able to hold on to her, but it pulls you a little bit in that direction, taking you off of your center of balance. So you're still holding on to her, but you're both kind of at half speed of the push moving in that direction. Neb. So she's been thinking about, well, I, I still can't really picture birds, so I can't do like a flying thing. So I need something that falls really, really well. And so Silas, what you actually grab a hold of is the scruff of a, a Maine Coon cat. Uh, <laughs> oh. The big giant paws, because she has read and seen that cats can do the thing where if they fall from really big heights, they can yeah. flip themselves over and land without hurting. And it was either that or a squirrel and she went with the cat. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. it, instead of grabbing uh, Neb's hair, you grab her fur. <laughs> ah! And as the two of you begin to kind of turn over and, you know, around each other, almost as if you were in a Mission Impossible fight sequence and you were falling as you kind of move in and as this air pushes you around, it does also sort of diagonally seem to kind of push you down until, Silas, you get control enough of flying and the cat... Ah! Kind of I, lands I didn't on know what them. one of those was. I had to look that up. I'm not a cat person, but <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you now. Okay. They are <laughs> yeah, huge. Sure. Yeah. For people who don't know, yeah, they're yeah. they're just like the biggest, sweetest, loveliest, furriest cats, and they've got that extra claw, and yeah, yep. they're huge. Yep. Yeah. So you sort of land, <clears throat> kind of get real low. It's real spiky up along the back of of, <laughs> of your kitty uh, spine there, as the wind kind of buffets at you and Silas too. You've been pushed about 60, 40 feet away from the others Ooh, uh, where you okay. kind of landed. It pushed you, it's it's fast. This is a strong thing. Um, but, but now it's you not are as there. bad on the ground. Though. Not as bad on right, the ground. Okay. So you can now start to walk or float fly uh, okay. back towards the rest of your party who are now at the bottom of this ladder. Uh, Feruza, you are still holding it strong. Mm -hmm. um, when, what would you like to do? When Neb lands, like she knows it's Neb by now, and she sort of like gives you like scritches behind the ear, and she says, "I guess you have eight left." <laughs> and, and Neb, hey. Neb makes some kind of response to that, but all you hear is. Rah, 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 rah. I mean, honestly, it's anyone you walk away from, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, she will stay there and let you scritch her. Yeah, <laughs> Robin is gonna just observe the land uh, mm. and, and just try to get bearings of what we're seeing. Um, and uh, her locate creature is up for an hour. So oh. she will know where that nice. where that creature went. So as long as it's within a thousand feet. Yes, is that, is that yes. A thousand feet. you do get a feel for it. Um, it. It got hit by that wind and just 
way pushed <laughs> off in the direction no. of that wind. Um, <laughs> you can start walking towards it, but you feel it's, it's at the far end of that thousand feet. It oh, got goodness. really flown over there. It turned okay. into a kite. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just, yeah, let everyone know. It's like, we have to make sure we follow the creature because that's where we'll find Floris and kind of- Wait, hey, hey, I just, you know, because I wasn't listening at that time. Um, <laughs> did, uh, wait, what, what's her name? I'm forgetting her name right now too. Floris? Uh, no. Zola? Zola, yeah. Did Zola, <laughs> did Zola say to the spider, find a portal to Floris or find Floris? Find Floris. Okay. Mm -hmm. Neb okay. pops out of being um, being a main coon and is standing <laughs> next to Feroza and so you get the full dichotomy of heights there. <laughs> as <laughs> as she, she doesn't really pop up that much further. She goes, no, she specifically asked it to go find Floris. Okay, so. excellent, excellent. Do we think that a non-flying rock spider is going to be able to find Floris, who is like a creature of air that is likely up there somewhere inside this points up? I mean, it's the best we've got. Yeah, I'm with you there. <laughs> and Silas uh, is going to actually, um, uh, his, uh, you know, kind of cow cape, um, uh -huh. you see it kind of starts growing pieces. And he actually, he already has goggles like on it, but he covers the mouth because he is yep. not in the business of sand getting all down his throat. A proper mm -hmm. sandstorm protective scarf. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so looking around, do we see like a castle in the sky or tracks or anything or is it just desert and lots of wind? So it looks like desert. It is terrain, you know, there okay. it, they said rises and falls, there are gorges and ravines, there are rock formations, there's little scrubbly bushes and tumbleweeds. Um okay. But you see no castles, no structures of any kind from this this vantage point here. It is, you know, it is barren badlands. Mm -hmm. uh, Fruz is going to look at Robin and say, so with this ability of yours to, I guess, sense where the thing is, do you like a bloodhound? Do you smell it? Like, how do you know where it is? Uh, it's just in my mind you know like mm -hmm. knowing where you've left your car in the parking lot <laughs> i don't know uh, g g <laughs> donald duck um is it possible that this is a place of air creatures is it possible that we're just not seeing them I think oh. anything is possible, but that's, yeah. I a mean, good point. it's, uh, and Neb is going to, hello, <laughs> I forgot this, I forgot this, I forgot the rule. It's a blanking. Uh, if you have oh. a spell up as concentration, you can't do a mm -hmm. spell that isn't concentration. Is that, right? that you can't yes. have two concentration not spells. Two, but I, two I could do a spell that isn't mm -hmm. concentration. Right. Yes. Okay. Correct. Um, I mean, I'm happy to look for anything invisible if you think it's important. I'm just putting it out there. I don't know if that's the case. It's uh, just a... Uh... All right. Well, why not? <clears throat> and mm -hmm. yeah, I guess see invisibility. What's your range on that? Just your sight? Your vision? Uh... It, it just says range area self. Why is that? Okay, good. That's because that's who your... you cast it on. Oh. Because once it's on you, that changes your vision. So oh. you can then see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just okay. within your your general vision. Okay, great. And um, yeah, nothing invisible pops out. If anything, okay. it kind of like it's staggering to you how barren this place is. There's okay. nothing alive that you can see or not see, uh, you know, within your line okay. of sight. Uh, this place for... may have been wrecked, kind of like uh, you know Ivy's place was. Maybe all the people are in mm. hiding, or they've become some kind of strange things that only communicate through you know lyrical rhyme or you know uh, who, who knows what's happening here. Glob, globs globs 
Well, I mean, I think it's our best bet just to go somewhere and see what we find. Follow the spider? Yeah. What, what was the name of this area again? What's the name of it? This new area? For some reason, I blanked. Etna. 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 It's the name of this realm. Thank you. So, yes, you still have your your senses, your spidey senses going, Robin. Um, <laughs> literally, I love it. Yes. That's cute. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you begin to follow in the direction that you sense. Um, you all can feel, as you start walking again, all of you have that sort of instinct kind of hunch and cover mm -hmm. because it is kicking up sand. Um, right and left is it all um, kind of <clears throat> hard to breathe. Go ahead, Maeve. Uh, it's, it's bright here, right? Yes. I'm going to put on some sunglasses to try and guard against the, the sand. Right. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Okay. Really smart. That helps kind of clear things. You can kind of keep your eyes out a little bit more. Um, it doesn't dull your perceptions as much, but it is, it's hard to hear things. It's hard to, it's just this constant mm -hmm. kind of, you know, windy sound around you all the time. You can just about hear your footsteps in the sand below you, um, which is also tricky, hard walking, right? I mean, all of this area, yeah. if you go with the wind, it'll push you a little bit and that's helpful. But trying to walk against the wind through sand, you, this is already extraordinarily tiring just to walk this 800 feet to get to where Robin is leading you. As Robin is, is leading, you actually notice that something has happened to her a little bit. You just see this kind of like iridescent sheen that mm. kind of almost creates like a force field around her. And this is like uh, her arcane ward. Mm. After she had mm. said she had cast the invisibility, she was able to kind of, that just kind of naturally happened to her. Mm. Mm. Nice. Mm. So you walk the about 800 feet until you come to a rock formation in which you see that this rock spider Hmm. had hit the rocks and fallen to the ground. You can just see the little pieces of it, the legs sort of scattered and broken apart on the ground. It still pulses a little bit with a little bit of life, a little bit of glow. It spits out a little bit of spore every so often, but it's kind of a... Oh. So wait, we, we think the battery just ran out? or what, no, what happened it, no, it smacked into the wall. It was blown into the rock formation. Yeah. Wait, wait, like, was this after we traveled a little bit? No, it was we were trying yeah. to catch up to it. Oh, okay. Because yeah, yeah. it was going to lead us. It was like our little guide. But it's still alive, right? Yeah. Still alive. Okay. Um, uh, Silas, do you, do you think you could heal it? I have no idea if it's even alive. Like, I mean, well, it's doing the little thing. So. I mean, I, 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 I can try. I can try, but I, I can tell you that, like, when I heal y'all, like, I don't even know how much it's healing as much as I'm convincing you that you're healed. <laughs> well, like, it's worked so far, so yeah. Okay. Well, all right. I will try, and I am uh, going to just uh, say, "Hey, little rock spider guy." You know, now's not the time to be laying down on the job. <laughs> and as I say that, like the magic courses out any uh, any response. Um. Yes. Oh. It okay. it doesn't the the rock legs and the pieces of it that have fallen apart do not suddenly roll back in, but mm -hmm. you do find that it the sort of pulsing of it gets a little more regular. Um, you know, you know, it has that weird mouth on the bottom um, and the eye globs on the top that kind of look like, you know, again, fungi of some sort. They sort of seem to settle, blink a little bit at you. Do I get uh, the impression that like, I mean, it, its body is just gone at this point? It's basically its legs have mostly been blown off. Its body was injured, but you've sort of healed the main body of it. It's How just, big is the main body? The main body of it's, you know, it's like um, like a pillow-sized rock. Um, okay. Um, that's going to restore uh, let's see, that's 12 hit points. Great. Yeah. Um, it heals up, but it does not regain its appendages. I am going mm. to telekinetically lift up the pillow. Yes. Um, and, um, 
and say, um, I don't know if you can understand me, but like you can still come with us. We don't know how to give you your, you know, rock things back, but like, I, I don't know. Can, can you understand me? Blink twice. It blinks twice. Okay. Um, can you like point your eye stalks in the direction that you think Floris is? It blinks twice. Does it point its eye stalks? Well, it goes a little bit of spores, sort of waits for a minute, and then points its eyes. Okay. All um, right. Do we want to bring this with us, or if we can, we put you back into Zola's world, and she can help you. Like, what? Well, do you want to go back to Zola at this point? Are these rock <laughs> legs real quick? Are they yes. irregular, like, or are they very standardized amongst these spiders that we've seen? Like, um, do they look the same, or does it look yes, like it's just rock legs? Okay. They all look the same, and and the 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 points of this have sort of a, the most. Um, uh, distinctive features. You know, they're, they're kind of upper part of the leg look like rock, yeah. but below you can see it's it's more organic and that's what they kind of tucked under them when they wanted to hide. Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to see if it was like, you know, hermit crab, um, you know, that, that mm. they just took on the rock or, or, or not. No, yeah, okay. the, the rock, the, they, as we said sort of before in checks, they don't necessarily, is like a hermit crab, but at a certain point, the shell of the, the hermit crab and the shell have all kind of fused together and it can't live without that shell. So the removal of, of they become symbiotic. Do, do we want to keep taking this with us or try to put it back through the portal and maybe Zola or some of her other spider things can come and help it? Because I think it's going to be, you know, a lot of trouble for us to continue. Uh, to to go with it um, to carry it with it, especially if it's in pain. Like, yeah, I, I can't figure out if it's in pain. Can can we collect any of the spores and maybe they can go on the wind and travel on the wind to Zola or to to Floris? I mean, I think it's, it's worth a try. I'll look back down at the spider. All right, so um, blink once if you want to go back to um, Lorelia. Yeah. Blink twice if you're okay to come with us. Um, it blinks twice, but it's slow and labored. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if, if it needs a rest. <laughs> I mean, its duty was to find Flores. Yeah. It probably wants to fulfill that, but at the same time, if you well, send it back through that, that portal, who's to say it won't just die on the other side? Because who's going to come for it? Yeah. That's true. Well, Zola is the whole world, is what crashed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and who knows what happens if they don't fulfill their duties I think it's yeah. just a matter of morals here I think we take them with us or we just go in the direction that you know it, it just pointed and take it back and continue on our own I'm, I'm going to come up real close I'm going to try mm -hmm. my best to talk to this creature, uh, hoping that it is a beast that I can talk to. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, we really appreciate your help, but I, we don't want you to be like in pain or anything. Mm -hmm. What would help you the most? I'm going to listen real hard to see if I can. May, may I throw one extra thing in here, which is, I don't yeah. know if this is relevant, but I speak Sylvan. Okay. Uh oh, mm. okay. Um, this thing feels, hmm. Hmm. you can feel like it understands you, Neb, but whatever it is, it's lost its, its capacity. It's like, um, 
like it's it's sort of part creature part construct now mm. oh, it's two okay. things something living and something non-living that have fused to become something else um so as you as you try to kind of connect with it there's a part of it that remembers a little bit what it's like but it's really now more um not a machine obviously but um yeah, it's okay. it's a sentinel. It's a scout. It's it mm-hmm. has a it has sort of a it's a program a little bit more. It's Steve. It's like Steve. A little bit. Oh. Steve had more going on, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's that. Yeah, it's in that that vein. For that that little bit that I get, do I at least get a feeling of like what it wants, it, it, not like what it thinks it has to do? Right. Um, that's interesting insight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love if you would roll that, actually. Plus seven, please. You sense duty. You sense not so much pain, but t- but exhaustion, um, like a low battery. Mm. Like it's out of juice a little bit here. Mm. Um, but you're not sure it can really that it, it doesn't sense pain the way you would. Um, it's it's sort of life or no life, energy or no energy, uh, a little bit more of a machine quality to it in that way. Okay, so when it's talking about, when it says, I wanna go find Floris, that is that is really, it's what it wants. That's um, the duty, that's the duty, yeah. Yeah, I'll turn back to everyone and go, well, I can't really talk with it too well there's it's it's weird it's kind of fascinating it's really interesting uh but i do get the sense it's not in pain it's just really tired uh and and really just it also wants to go find flores and do the do the thing it was told to do so i think it's it's okay if we bring it with us we're not carrying around a creature that's (sighs) really in pain or anything maybe maybe if we give it a break from walking around maybe it'll have a chance to to get its juice back all right. I'm okay with that. And <clears throat> let's try to move forward. Yeah. Well, we at least have uh, a, a direction that the, the ice docks pointed us, so I guess. Are you going to yeah. float it, Silas? How is this thing traveling? I mean, I, I guess I'm floating it. How heavy floating is it? Up. Yeah, how it's, heavy is it's it? It's heavy. It's it's a it's like, a rock, you know. Like, like how heavy? Like a boulder. Oh, a boulder? Well, not a boulder. What I mean, like it, you know, it's got to be like forty pounds. It's a big, oh, heavy okay. thing. If it's less than sixty, I'm floating it. Okay. Okay. It's, got it's it. The big, big sibling to a pet rock. It's, yeah. it's the yeah. small boulder the size of a large boulder. Okay. Yeah. I guess. So as long as it's less than sixty pounds, mm. I can float it without yes. extra expenditure. Yeah. So yes, that's that's fine. Yeah, I'd say about about forty pounds. It's like a you know, good. This is the hefty part of it. Uh, so yes, float it ahead of you. Uh, it will every once in a while give its little spores um, and then move its <laughs> eye stocks in the direction it wants you to go. And as you sort of continue in this way, um, you begin to see much more of Etna. Again, this barren wasteland that seems to just go on and on and on in every direction. Mm-hmm. And similar to, to Tiver, it's day night system is different it's weird you're not noticing a real sort of difference in the in the time uh, or the way that the world looks um you finally come to kind of a, a ravine and it sort of points itself down towards this this ravine and you can see that if you kind of going down through this pass there is sort of an opening underground about 400 feet down in front of you. Oh boy. Can we look in there? The opening looks fairly small, but there, you know, you can see sort of a, yeah, it's like a a little sort of hole into the ground at the kind of bottom of this ravine. Two dunes kind of coming up on either side. Well, this wouldn't be the first cave that we've crawled through so at least we all all have experience now it's true i'll head over to the hole just to try to see how big is it really i'm, and I'm does gonna it... 
I'm going to take a, you know, you're at the assume... top of the ravine here now. So it's about 400 feet ahead of you. It's like way oh, off you know, really okay. all the way down and down into it. I'm giving you a heads up from here that you Guys, can sort okay. of see this. This is the first feature that you've seen that sort of stands out amongst this sort of wasteland. Okay. You want me to scout that out and come back and tell you if I can see anything? I mean, if that's the direction we got to go, we might as well just all go. Yeah. I appreciate the offer, though, but yeah, well, I think... I'm just... Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Like, I you hope all... it's not, you know, quicksand or a slide or something that's about <laughs> to just put us down the toilet drain. Me like too. Like you go down the hole. Yeah. yeah. Well, if Floris is under there, then... Just... <laughs> that's um... so positive thinking. I love it. <laughs> under... Under the sand, it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like there's anything beneath it. Like it does, this feels like this is sand all the way down, right? It doesn't feel like this is like a, a, a relatively thin layer of sand on top of. Um, as you you can start to dig and go down, it's pretty hard packed sand in some places. Other places, mm -hmm. it feels more like dunes where it's kind of constantly moving and the wind is shifting it, and that the terrain would change quite a bit um, as the wind moves things around. Um, but yeah, I mean, it feels like it is, it is sand. It's yeah. desert. -y. It's desert. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is right, the sand warm? Down again? I know you've talked about there's no clear sun or anything, but is it warm? No, it's not cold or warm here. It's not, it's not even, it's just kind of, um, yeah, like, uh, you know, 55 <laughs> Fahrenheit, like a very slightly middle chilly, of the road. middle of the road, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you know, you'd want, you, you know, you pulled your jackets back out and kind of popped the collars and things like that, but you're not cold. You're just uncomfortable. It's more for the wind than it yeah, is for yeah. anything else. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So you're going to make your way down the dune into this ravine yes. and you can see that, yes, on both sides is sort of this loose sand that kind of comes down into this, this pocket that you're walking along. Um, as you walk along the bottom of this and you can start to see up ahead the hole, which from above looked like a cave, is actually a set of two golden doors. Oh. Well, Feroza, maybe you were right. Maybe this is. <laughs> maybe where... this is. Well, I, the doors are where in relation to what we're looking at? So from above, you just sort of saw a hole. As you come in this way, from sort of underneath an overhang, you see these two golden doors. They're almost slanted like a cellar door would be on kind of a slant. Um, that they weren't visible from that high angle. But now that you're coming in on the same level, you can see two gold color, sand color. They blend in very well. Uh, but they are doors. There are little, you know, hooks on them, you know, rings on them that you can use to pull them up. I'm getting some Is... real seek the outer diamond in the oh. kind of vibes off this thing. Yeah. Um, Bruce is just going to step a little bit forward and look at the others and say, this is choices we have to make. <laughs> this is what it feels like. It feels like a choice. Is there, is there any sort of pattern on the doors? Um, yes, it reminds you quite a bit of some of the patterning you saw on the scene. Mm. Huh. And any any words or any markings that indicate um, investigation? You know. Would you like me to? Do it? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Uh, that's a plus six. Plus six. Um, nothing here is a word or a language. Um, it is f figurative and and um, uh, pictorial in its nature. Hmm. Well, do we speak friend and enter? Um, well, so, so on Steve, we had to push certain objects that matched the images on it. Yeah. I mean, have we see? tried to open the doors? Yeah. I don't know. Feruza, do you want to just try? They look heavy. They look made of gold. Shall we just knock or try I a door? So. I think well, knocking is probably a good idea. Here's my question <laughs> for you guys. Is this a thing where, 
one is the right door and one is the wrong door, or are these just two different doors with two different completely different outcomes? Wow, yeah. these last 17 days has made you guys really interesting. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, is didn't Steve knock out cold <laughs> the first time you, you went over and tried to touch him before you put the... I think he like broke your arm, Miss Robin, if I'm remembering that right. This is yeah. just the first door that Feruza, the door master, has seen in a long time. Yeah. So Fair enough. Excited. Yeah, I will defer, defer to the door master. <laughs> This is true. This is yeah. true. If there's anyone who I trust to be able to handle a door, it's going to be you, Faruza. But I do, I do think if we're trying to enter someone's home or something, it can't hurt to knock, right? Like either, yeah, either nothing happens or someone comes to the door. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I was just going to rip it off, but you're absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's plan B if, it's C, plan C. Plan A is knock and see if someone comes. Plan B is try the door and see if it's going to open. Yeah, and then plan open. C is watch you be awesome and rip it off its hinges. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so my question is, are both the doors completely identical? Um, they look like they're mirror images of each other. The so pattern. One, one, ha one hand, one doorknob is on one side and one doorknob is yeah, on the other? Yeah, you've got two handles on either side with sort of a seam oh. down the middle and the patterns on the with door like sort of seem to mirror image them uh, as they go around. So we have French doors. Can we, uh, <laughs> one, do, do the patterns, do the, the images of the pictures look like anything distinct to us? Um, I mean, it matches sort of some of those, you know, vines and then, you know, swirly clouds and then swirly water and then sort of fire. Much. It matches so those it, sort of it elements. Is all four, oh, I have my pocket watch. It is all four, yeah. yes. No, that's true. You do still have your pocket watch. You don't see any yes. place for the pocket watch specifically okay. to go. Um, and if, but if you want to take it out and kind of, you know, it just does just to see because with Steve, it didn't look like there was it, there was the symbol, mm -hmm. but it sort of like magnetized to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yours is the the uh, uh, vines. vines, the vines. Mm -hmm. So you take it out and almost as if like hypnotism as you sort of wave it over and you do find that it's a little magnetically drawn, you know, to the sort of viney section of the door. It doesn't hold fast to it, but there is some sort of magical energy, some calling out to. It doesn't, you know, grab it, but there is sort of a, almost like true north, you know, a compass to true north. Oh, um, uh, for as a, a, a yes. Robin, mm -hmm. I remember you telling us about how when you first met Steve, not the whole breaking of the arm thing, but like, you know, didn't you have to like put water on him and put fire on him and put dirt on him, dirt on and him. Do, like yeah is, do you think it's the same thing silas here? without any prompting spits on the water <laughs> <laughs> well, i guess we're about to um, find out <laughs> your spit gets caught by wind and goes a little far flung but it still I, I, lands I, I, I on the closer yeah <laughs> <laughs> you manage it um it <laughs> lands there nothing seems to happen um okay. As you've all been talking there and standing there and figuring this out and kind of holding watches and spitting and doing all the things, uh, Feruza, as you are sort of closest to it, would you please make a perception check for me? Yes. Oh, this is a good one. That's a good one. 14. Just a very faint from behind the door, very quiet, as if it's suddenly getting a little louder and a little louder. You have half a second here to respond. Is there something you'd like to do? Um, okay, so for this danger sense, I don't know what that sort of means yes. here, but she can sort of um, sense if it's, if, if it's ominous, even if she doesn't understand the language. That's it's ominous. ominous. She turns something on is, her. Something is with a windy sort of sound is approaching. From within. Okay, Bruce turns the door. She goes, stand back, and she just moves back away from the doors because she felt it coming toward the door. Uh huh. That's so you sort of push things. people behind you and say, Move stand back. back. Mm -hmm. As you do, the sound stops, and you hear boom, boom, boom. And with that, we're going to say thank you very much for this <laughs> evening on Children of Erte. Thank you all so much for being here. I adore you all. We will see you in two weeks. Have a good night. Oh. Bye.
Sí, sí.